Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in my presentation, I would like to uh, present uh, research based on 10 decisions of the Czech Constitutional Court in the field of civil law. I had to pick only a few out of many. So to avoid arbitrariness, I choose only those decisions that had caught the attention of professional public. I thus focused on rulings dealing with social importance questions which resonated. In other words, uh, to which jurisprudence responded throughout professional publications or through popular web blogs. Uh, my presentation will be uh, divided into three parts. Uh, the first and the longest part will provide a qualitative analysis of the selected decisions. In order to save some time, I have divided my decisions into a group of decisions concerning a similar topic. I will briefly introduce each group, mention relevant facts of these cases and point out uh, the most important legal aspects. In the second part, I will address questions uh, raised in the call for presentation. And the third and the final part will be dedicated to the qualitative, uh, sorry, quantitative analysis according to the research designed by Professor Todd. Uh, the first group concerned cases from the field of family law. I will start with a case in which the uh, Constitutional Court dealt with the possibility to adopt a child by a registered couple of a same sex. Czech Republic, similarly to Hungary, prohibited registered partners from adopting a child. Uh, the relevant legislation was contained in the Czech Civil Code and in the Act on Registered Partnership. Civil Code allows the adoption only in case of a married couple. Uh, there is, however, one exemption from this rule which allows the adoption by an other person. In other words, not by a couple, but by an individual. Uh, the Civil Code also does not explicitly exclude an interpretation of a term other person uh, in a such a way which includes also a registered partner. However, it is the Act on Registered Partnership which contained a strict prohibition of or express prohibition of this possibility. As a result, Czech legislature, legislature allowed the adoption of a child by an individual who does not live in a marriage the fact that he or she is a person of heterosexual or homosexual orientation is absolutely irrelevant. On the other hand, at the same time, the legislator prohibited this individual from living in an official and registered partnership. So you could become a parent de facto, but not de jure, which indeed was logical. And why choose this case? Well, the question is, it is for the court or for the legislator to regulate the same-sex couple's adoptions, since there is no right to adopt a child, and I believe that uh, the legislator is uh, or shall or have, has the right to set the standards. Another thing which is worth the interest from the perspective of this research is the fact that the court refused to define the term family and to determine its meaning. It also avoided any deeper discussion as to the similarities and differences between a traditional family and a same-sex family, since objectively uh, there are some important differences between the two. It is the presence of a female or a male parenting pattern which is missing in the same-sex family. And this thing should have been addressed at least a little. In addition to that, the court used in order to support its conclusions arguments based on foreign case law. Uh, the, the term case law was used in a plural. Uh, uh, however, the use of the comparative method was uh, propositive as uh, only one Austrian decision was cited. And I guess that it is not surprising that it was a decision where the Austrian court reached the same conclusions uh, as uh, the Czech Constitutional Court. Second decisions concern a same-sex couple that has been married in California. One of the spouses is a Czech citizen, the other not. Uh, this couple has a child, and according to the law of California, both spouses have a status of a parent. One of them actually is a biological 
parents, uh, but they do not know who. And the child was born to a surrogate mother. Czech common courts refused to recognize this status because of a conflict with public order as protected by the private international law. On the contrary, the constitutional court said that it is in the best interest of the child that his factual and in his country of residence also legal relationship should be recognized in the Czech Republic. Uh, which really is interesting as the law which was applied by the common courts and the public or the reservation has an aim of protection of the best interest of the child. Thus, in this case, the constitutional court de facto replaced the Czech conception of the best interest of the child by the American one. I have also analyzed three decisions concerning the alternating care of children. The uh, first of them was the case in which the court said that it is in the best interest of the child to be primarily in the case in the care of both parents. So if all legal conditions are met, then entrusting children to alternating care should be the rule, not the exception. Uh, and this conclusion was indeed revolutionary. Uh, the civil code itself does not set any preference. All, all childcare options are treated as equal by law. However, in practice, the courts had entrusted children almost always to their mothers. With this decision, the practice has changed. Men beca became equal to women, or at least it seems so to the public. Nevertheless, in two subsequent decisions, the court somewhat shaped its former conclusions. To put it simply, the court said that every case concerning a child is unique. Thus, it is difficult to speak of binding and precedential effect of its case law, as its conclusions can hardly be generalized. And this really is important as well as interesting. Uh, the Constitutional Court usually understands, or, or in every other decision, understands its previous decisions in a very simple way as a binding case law, as precedence. And to be honest, it also usually pays only a little attention to the facts of the case, but not here. Uh, uh, this line of, of decisions concerns uh, the contract law, and it is significant for two reasons. Firstly, it enters the area of enforcement proceedings. Enforcement courts usually uh, originally mechanically ordered executions on the basis of a judgment or an arbitration award without reviewing the conditions that led to its issuance. And I'm using here the term mechanically, which may have the pejorative meaning, but not in this case. This is something I would like to emphasize. Uh, based on the case law of the Constitutional Court, are uh, now these courts expected to essentially review the terms of the finding proceedings, and in some cases to refuse the enforcement. They must refuse the enforcement in those cases where the conditions of the contract are unconstitutional. And this brings me to the second reason why these decisions are significant. It is because they set certain constitutional limits on terms and conditions of contracts, certain amount of defa default interest, the use of contractual penalties, as well as a certain combination of contractual terms may under certain circumstances violate the Constitution. And this is so where the whole contract is either manifestly unfair or contrary to good morals. These boundaries are unfortunately somewhat blurry, but we now know for, that, for example, the amount of interest amounting to 185% uh, per year is too much, and that this line of cases applies solely to consumer contracts. It also has to be emphasized that the civil law experts criticize this group of decisions as it may help people, uh, but it also brings uh, significant instability into the enforcement proceedings. Uh, and now I will deal with uh, two cases dealing with consumer protection. Consumer protection is not directly regulated by the Czech constitutional law, by the Czech charter. 
In European Union law, it is safeguarded by Article 38 of the EU Charter, uh, and this article states merely that Union policies shall ensure a high level of consumer protection. All the relevant legislation, all the standards are provided by secondary law. In a dispute between a consumer who failed to inspect goods at the time of its delivery and a seller who failed to provide the customer with all the necessary information, the Constitutional Court stated that a common court has to ensure consumers' rights to judicial protection. In doing so, it has to respect international obligations of the Czech Republic, the fact that certain powers were transferred to the EU, and the fact that fundamental rights and basic freedoms enjoy the protection of judicial bodies. As a result, common courts have a duty to promote Article 38 of the EU Charter and thus protect consumers, otherwise they would violate the relevant provisions of the Czech Constitution. Since the provision of the Article 38 is general, it is not possible to apply it directly. It doesn't have a direct effect. Uh, the secondary law and the check and its check implementation does have to be taken into the account. The practical result, according to the Constitutional Court, is that a consumer may withdraw from a distance agreement within a period of one time of one year, and also that the consumer is not liable for a reduced value of goods. And I would like to point out that this conclusion is not necessary from the viewpoint of the European Union law. And in fact, it was not required by it. It does not correspond to the principles of application of EU law as uh, formulated by the Court of Justice and its activists uh, in the light of these principles. This approach is also problematic in terms of the Czech law and above all, it is also overly complicated. It is basically like scratching behind an ear with the wrong, wrong hand. Uh, because the EU Charter is binding in itself. Being said, the Constitutional Court would have to leave its comfort zone and change its view of the EU law as it did with regard to international law. Uh, I consider it somewhat excessive to infer based on the right to a fair trial such consumer rights. Second case from this group concerns a hotel manager who had required Russian guests to sign a declaration condemning the conduct of the country with regard to the annexation of Crimea. The core of this case fall in the public, the field of public law, as the key issue was the legality of the fine which was imposed on the hotel by the Czech Trade Inspection Authority. Uh, the court, the constitutional court, in this case interpreted restrictively the anti-discrimination law. As a result, no breach was found. Uh, the reason why I mention this case, nevertheless, is that it is also related to contract law and to unfair commercial terms and practices. This regulation, however, was not taken into the account. The court did not address either the Czech or the European uh, consumer protection regulation. The Article 38 of the EU Charter hasn't been mentioned at all. Uh, and funny thing is that the uh, the panel was in this case exactly the same as in a, a previous activistic consumer decision. And by the way, the president of the Constitutional Court uh, did uh, one really extremely unordinary thing. It, he publicly declared this decision, decision to be wrong. He also said that he is ashamed of it and most importantly, that this decision should not be followed by common courts. And let's deal with questions now. Uh, the first, first question is hard to answer. The court deals with things as they come. Uh, the truth is that the court is quite open and as even small uh, value disputes can touch on serious constitutional issues. In reality, however, the cases that come to the Constitutional Court are filtered by attorneys at laws, as the parties to the proceedings must be represented by a lawyer. And these lawyers can be divided into two basic groups, realists 
We do not push clients into disputes where they have little hope of success. And the other group, uh, which is uh, permanently increasing, are the activists who always see a chance to change things. And the fact is that the constitutional court is a relatively difficult institution to predict. So filing a constitutional complaint therefore makes sense because there is always a certain probability that the constitutional court will assess the case differently from the previous case. Uh, nevertheless, the question may be rephrased. Which judge is most likely to deal with ordinary people's disputes? In the past, uh, Justice Eliska Bagdarova was considered to be a lottery jackpot. At present, I would personally prefer Justice Katarina Shimachkova to be the judge or reporter in my case. Uh, the second question as to the rights concerned. Uh, in the first case, the decision was based mainly on a right to human dignity, uh, together with the rights to privacy and the prohibition of discrimination. Petitioners relied on the prohibition of discrimination plus a prohibition of discrimination based on sexual orientation. In the second case, the decision was based on the right to family life and the best interest of the child. Petitioners invoked the best interest of the child plus the prohibition of discrimination. In the third, fourth and fifth case, the right to parental upbringing and care as well as the right to family life were breached according to the court. Uh, the interpretation of the subconstitutional law was based on the principle of the best interest of the child. Petitioners relied on same rights plus the right to a fair trial and prohibition of discrimination. The six to eight case were based on a right to a fair trial and a right to a statutory judge and partly the right to own property. Principle of fairness and good morals radiating into the subconstitutional law were also taken into the account. Petitioners relied mainly on a right to fair trial, good morals, rule of law, a right to a statutory judge, rights to own property and principles of justice and proportionality. In the ninth case, the petitioner invoked the right to a fair trial, right to own property and principle pacta sunt servanda. The court relied on a right to a fair trial in combination with some other provisions of the constitution, plus uh, with the article 38 of the EU charter, which calls for a consumer protection. And the last case concerned the freedom of expression plus the right to engage in enterprise. The petitioner relied on a provision of charter according to which everyone may do uh, uh, that which is not prohibited by law, in addition to that on a provision according to which duties may be imposed only on the basis and within the bounds of law. And he has also invoked the right to the freedom of thought and conscience and the freedom of expression. As to the third question, I haven't noticed any su such an approach. In fact, in one case, the court used another case which was delivered in a field of public law in order to support its conclusions. Fourth question, the court has been inspired by the Drittwirkung doctrine by the Bundesverfassungsgericht. As a result, indirect effect of fundamental rights was introduced into the civil law matters. And this approach was followed also by the Czech legislator and found its way into the civil code. According to this act, each provision of private law can be understood only in accordance with the charter and the constitutional order at all. Now, when it comes to five question, I haven't noticed any special principles, not at least not in my set of decisions. Uh, uh, another question, yes, the court tends to rely more on values. It also reflects people's stories. In addition to that, the court usually uh, does not take the formalistic approach. Uh, that is so often typical for ordinary courts. And in addition to that, the court often uses uh, dogmatic arguments, dogmatic reasoning. Uh, special features or interesting phenomena the court often really tries to help the individuals concerned. The potential future negative consequences of a, such a decisions are over, often overlooked. 
And this is something that is typical, I would say. Uh, even one of the justices, Ludwig David, in one of his dissenting opinions said that he has great respect for the knowledge of constitutional law that his colleagues have. However, that it is not on his experience that the same colleagues sometimes assume that the insight into the constitutional values and principles warranties or rather replaces knowledge of the know-how of the relevant field of subconstitutional law. Well, in my last slide, the last and third part, here you can see the statistical data. And as you can see, the grammatical interpretation was of little significance. Of course, it is always there. In the beginning, it is the starting point of the interpretation. Uh, but uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't huge. Uh, it wasn't used much uh, uh, into the into the detail. Uh, the court in my set of cases heavily relied on external arguments, in particular on the case law of the European Court of Human Rights. It has also taken into the account the opinions of the Committee on the Rights of the Child, and also the interpretation was based. It's often based on previous uh, case law of the Constitutional Court. This was quite common. And as I have said already, uh, also the use of non-legal arguments uh, was quite common uh, in these civil law cases. Together with the value-based value approach, uh, also the dogmatic style of reasoning was typically used. I haven't noticed any use of the subjective theological interpretation, not at all. In fact, it was once replaced by the evolutionary method of interpretation. So, uh, I guess that that's that's it. I have used all my time, so thank you for your attention. And I'm looking forward to other to hear other presentations. <laughs>